Hello, welcome to IMHO. <laughs> In my homosexual opinion. I'm Darby. And I'm Alexis P. Bebbles. The P today stands for psychedelic drugs. Okay, remember my story about when I worked in the tea shop and this girl came in and she, she couldn't order and then later she came back and said, sorry, I was on shrooms. No, but I love her. I'm okay. happy for her. There was this, famously, this girl came in, she couldn't, famously. she couldn't find her words and she just started crying and I was like, Oh my God. And then the next day. <laughs> you are so empathetic. I love that yeah. about you. And then the next day she came back, she's like, sorry, oh I was God. such a mess yesterday. I was on shrooms and I couldn't like, I was like, oh my God, that's okay. Then suddenly at I was my new At my new job the other day, this woman, this girl, something was high and she was like, do you have a step ladder or anything? I was like, well, I, I can't let you do it, but I can get you whatever you need. And she was like, okay, sorry. I just want to look at those things. And then I get her the things and she's like, these are so amazing. Sorry, I'm on shrooms right now. And I was like, and you wanted to get on a ladder, girl? I really, listen, don't do drugs. I'm interested. Use your judgment. I'm interested. Use I would just judgment. like to learn more. Oh, I think you would. Love it. No, I don't think you would. Enlist it. I, I don't I think would you love would. it. No, but you know what we are doing? Our cycles have synced up. We've discovered this recently because yeah. we're podcast girlies, okay? We love podcasts. We wake up, we listen podcasts. Wake up. Go work, listen podcast. okay? Yeah, we need something constantly in our Someone ears at all times. Someone talking to us times. that we can kind of ignore. If I have to go to the kitchen, I'm going to need to listen to something on my way there. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Lately, lately, something has switched. And I call her. Me. I call her. Something and I is says, not the same. I call her and I say, you know what? I've been listening in jail. Oh. to music lately. And, and she says to me, she says, me too. Isn't Hashtag. that crazy? So now we're going to tell you and each other <laughs> what we've been listening to. I just, I go through cycles where I only listen to podcasts, no joke, for like a year and a half. And then suddenly I'm into music. Again. Oh no, mine's been Can't like explain it. the last eight years. Only podcasts. Can't explain it. Haven't heard a single new song. Do a leaper. Don't know her. You know what it is? We had rain and cloud and gray weather here for weeks. And the last few days have been 75 and sunny and perfect. So I think maybe our bodies are ready for music. Well, and We're also, ready to move. I've, I've switched my schedule. The energy of my days is very different now. And sometimes I don't want to hear people talking. I just want to hear music. And Because you'll have to hear people talking all day. That's true. And sometimes the music that they play where I work, I really like. So I'll put it in a playlist and then I'll go listen to it. That's nice. Yeah. And it's kind of fun. And then when it comes on at work, I'm like, oh yeah, I like this song. Eventually um, that will backfire and you will learn to hate it. Well, they song. mostly play like the TikTok Christian popular music, songs. Right. I'm, um. Tell me, you're in uh, your. I'm in my black pink era. Black pink in, in my era. era. I'm deeply obsessed. I got to be honest with you. I'm not proud of this. It did start because of Aura Mayari's terrible talent show. It just reminded me that Blackpink is a thing. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go listen to Kill This Love. And then I got put on the Spotify Blackpink collection playlist. It's all I listen to. Every day, you're a Black Pink all yeah. day. I still listen to a podcaster too. She likes Sammy Ray too, the TikTok girl. Oh, I love Sammy Ray and Friends. I love the song Jackie Onassis, okay? And I know on TikTok they said yeah. that she's nails. She didn't, she's she's pretty to a certain, if you squint. So I love Sammy Ray and Friends and Blackpink. I can't get enough. I, weeks, weeks now, weeks, that, can't get enough. That TikTok song of the guy, I had to block him because he was annoying me, but I really like the song Shine, the new TikTok. I don't need no light to see you shine is your golden hour. Oh, I don't know that one. It's really pretty. I'll send it to you. I've been listening to that. I like flowers. I like Miley Flowers. That's a great song. Yeah, I think it's fun. I got so confused for about 30 seconds, which is a long time. But Flies but only because, live 24 hours. Because women, we can have our own money and buy our own flowers. I know that's confusing. It's no I longer... I think you misunderstood the point of the song. And I don't think it's empowering women at all. If anything, it's saying, get yourself a man. An Australian one if you can. No, but I got confused because she's responding to a Bruno Mars song. I was like, she is so pissed at Bruno Mars right now. <laughs> like, I would not want to be Bruno Mars. But then I realized it, was, yeah. it, it wasn't exactly Bruno Mars that she yeah. was talking about. But yeah, I love that song. Yeah, I like it too. And then I know it's late in the game. And I know there's an aspect of this movie that is gross. But the Call Me By Your Name soundtrack. I just love it so much. Listen, it's the it, soundtrack. It brings me you don't such... Wanna eat people chill and that's combat. okay well who knows i've never tried it if justin bieber taught us one thing it's never say never and he's canadian and 
you know. They were roommates. Okay, also, before we jump into dr- oh, Did you hear that? I got the Alexis Bevels bubble. I'm so sorry, everybody. She's the a what, a what, what now? <laughs> you don't know you do this. <laughs> Okay, okay, because you, you have a edit my to bubble. voice. You bubble. Oh, yeah, I get bubble. I get, everyone get, gets bubbles. But you get, like, a lot. I worry that sometimes you're chugging candy before you get here or something. Like, there's a chugging gummy bear. Chugging candy. Do not act like that's out of the realm of possibilities. Well, no, of course, for me. For anybody. <laughs> no, but I got I got an update today. Tell or me. a couple days ago. Tell I don't me. remember. It doesn't matter. You know you have a sister that we like to say her name is Anal Backwards. Yeah. Well, friend of the pod, Lincoln, she reached out to me with an Instagram profile of a drag queen. Would you please read out this girl's name? <laughs> <laughs> Now, wait a minute. Her name is Lana Backward. <laughs> <laughs> Which is her sister. That's, that's truly brilliant. So funny. Oh, that's truly that's brilliant. so funny. So she follows you. Lana Backwards. I won't follow her back. When she's ready to, I don't know, stick it to her sister, she's going to stick it oh, in her anal because of you. that's so funny. Not oh, funny. I love that. That's a good drag name. That's so funny. Thank you for, for having that drag name so that we could discuss. So and funny. Th thank you so much, Lincoln, for keeping a lookout for anal. Before we get into the episode, I have, oh, one, more, okay. I have one more segment I want to yeah. introduce to the show. Wait. Why'd you stop it? That's the wrong one. This is this is the right one. Is this copyrighted? Like can I play this? I don't know. Okay. So we all know my favorite okay, that's the thing. <laughs> we all know my favorite movie is Speed, Thank starring you for Sandy so B into that. and Keanu Reeves. Speed takes place on a bus, and now I'm taking the bus. I'm doing mm. a fun little social experiment where I get a day job full time and I ride the bus to and from it. Two things happened recently on buses that weren't quite bomb on bus level Keanu Reeves vibes, but they were like on the way there. So I think we're kind of working up to, to speed vibes. Oh, that happened when you were on the bus? Yes. Oh. So the other night on the way home, I was kind of sitting in the middle of the bus and there was this guy in front of me and this other guy comes up from the back to talk to the guy sitting there and he goes, is your name George or what? I don't remember. He's it was like, is your named George and he shows him an ID. He's like, is this you? And the guy's like, no, you got the wrong guy. And the guy from the back of the bus is like, ah, it looks like you. And he's like, no, dude, you got the wrong guy. And this is going on for a while. And then he's like, what's your name? And the guy's like, Jose or whatever his name was. Anyway, the guy that was just sitting there minding his own business, he gets up to get off the bus and the back of the bus guy follows him and he puts his hand in his pocket. <gasps> and, I can, and I'm like, okay, okay, this is interesting. So I'm watching, I, I, I turn my headphones off Smart. and I'm, I'm listening, but I'm still pretending to TikTok or whatever. Well, of course. And then he pulls out of his pocket a knife and he just keeps it right there. Luckily the guy gets off and it was fine and he puts the knife back, but then he goes back behind me and now I'm like, fuck, I'm nervous. Cause now I know he has a knife. Did he ask you if you were George? Cause that's anti-trans. Yeah. <laughs> and we were on a bus, so we were pro-trans. <laughs> we <were> <laughs> Then, a couple days later, I was having a hard mental day at work. Like, I was mm. just telling myself that I was doing everything wrong and everything was bad. And so, I went to get on the bus, and it was one of those things where, like, I saw the bus was coming, but it was stopped at the red light, and I knew if I just kind of jogged, I would get across the street to the bus stop before the bus, and I mm. could get on. Right. And there were people there, so I knew it had to stop, too. So, I decided to do that, and then I get, the people get on, I'm right behind them, but the doors start to close. You know when, like, an elevator door you can kind of like put your hand in and they'll right. open back up right. and I kind of thought that's what would happen so I was I mean they kind of shut on me and I went like this and I was like oh and I as, as soon as I realized the doors were gonna continue to shut I was like oh and then the bus driver lady she looks over at me she opened them back up and I was like uh can I get on and I have my music going so I don't hear I didn't hear what she said but she said something like, well, you're the one who stuck your hand, stopped my doors or something like that. And I had just already had a bad day. So I just 
lost it. And I was like, I'm gonna wait for the next one. And then I like walked off and I waited 20 minutes for the next bus. You shut the bus doors on me and then got mad because I wanted to get on the bus and pay for it to ride. Okay, okay. That is fucking insane. That's an insane. Right, thing. like I keep going over it and like all I did was try to board the bus. Now this is a perspective that I hate. Okay. So I just want to preface that by saying I'm not enjoying this. Could she have had just as bad a day as no, you had? No, of course, of course. And then everyone, okay, what if guy with the knife kept stopping her bus and trying to cut open the doors? So she was really careful to constantly close after each person enters. Yeah. And she thought you were knife girl, his sister. <laughs> she thought you were his sister, knife girl. So she was trying to keep the bus safe. Also, not to, I really am just kind of shitting on your parade. Uh, I My think best they, parade. Yeah, they call that rain. You say that you're building up to speed. We do live in LA, so possible. Can I point out that the bus you take to and from work is like 10 minutes down a single road, literally no turns, and more importantly, no interstates? Wasn't the whole point of speed was once they hit 55, was it? 50. 50, that they couldn't go below that. Does mm -hmm. your bus even hit 40? No. So it could be like but, but, normal speed. But I don't know what happens after that 10 minute because I get on and I go to the end of the line and then I get on the end of the line and I go back to my house. So I don't know. Maybe I don't you know fall if because maybe I got on, maybe I get on the bus. Maybe then in that ten minutes, Keanu Reeves comes in and he's and he realizes. Okay, so again, you know so what sorry I mean? to, I'm shitting in your parades. Tuba. My bus parade. Yeah, in your bus parade. I'm sh sh sorry to shit My again, bussy. but <laughs> sorry to shit in your bussy. I'm so sorry, but I must point out that Speed 1 had Keanu Reeves, but Keanu did not return for Speed 2. No. So what makes you think he's gonna return for Speed, what would this be? Three. Well, no, because Speed 1 had Keanu and Sandra. Speed 2 had just Sandra, so it stands to logic that Speed 3 would be Keanu again, because then they both get to do two. Okay, and he's getting on to ride it he's 10 getting minutes on... down the, this... No, no, but once I'm on the bus... Okay, here's how I imagine it goes. I'm, okay. It's the end of the day. I'm so tired. Mm. She tried to shut the doors on me, but I got on. Because you had your knife. And then Keanu gets on and says, there's a bomb on this bus. We have to get to safety. And I point out, Burbank Airport's right there. Do we want to just loop around? And he says, quiet! Everyone. That's a really good Keanu. Thank you. Snatch game. Wow. Incredible. Um, save it. Save it. And don't, then, don't waste it all right. And then, us. but then it's like, we have to keep going because in this one, instead of going over 50, it's just like once you start. Because remember, I'm on the end of the, the beginning of the line. This so is then the I get stuck on. The beginning. And I this can't. This is the beginning of that bus line. And instead of, and you can't decelerate, you have to continually accelerate. Yeah, I think it's solid. I think everything you said sounded very long. We're gonna work it out. Well, you know what else we're gonna work out? Drag race. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I, but, have to, I have to close out the speed section. Oh. Again, I don't think I can play this. Okay. I'll find some copyright free music that sounds just like that. Don't but worry. that's like, that doesn't have words in it. It's. You're right. I'm sorry. I was absolutely wrong. Copyright only exists for words. We tried to make that intro to the show as long as possible because we just got some news that 90 minute episodes are returning. How do you feel about that? Not great. Not great. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> I agree with you. And, and like Alexa said last week, when there's that many girls, the runways are too short. Yeah. And we did miss out on a cute moment with the old gays. At the beginning of the season, I think a 90 minute episode is perfectly fine. The it's the last half where we don't need, need all it. of that. And guess what? We're switching to yeah. 90 minutes again when there's a top seven. If my math is correct. Which it hasn't been in the past. As someone pointed out on Twitter, we love to complain. Okay, we can't be happy either way. And that's true. No, that's our right and that's as true. Americans. Because had they started the season at 90 minutes and then cut it into 60 minute episodes, I would have loved it. But I still would have complained. I still would have found a reason to complain yeah. if they had flipped it. But I will say now, my current complaint, it's a terrible idea. I will say it is very funny. Did you see the side by side of Todrick's big? Um, mm -hmm. It is interesting how his notes app, long diatribe, 
about at the end of this series, you're not getting your 90 minute episodes back. And like someone posted it side by side saying, we're going back to 90 minutes. As soon as WeHo's over. I gotta be honest, it does make me want to go to WeHo. I feel like I could bully someone there. I will never Actually, forget. There was I a place go. called, um, oh God, I Bonanza agree. or something like Cowboy and Girl place. And when you walked in, there was two stages and they both had poles and then a rope swing in between them. And there was all these sexy cowboys and cowgirls doing Cirque du Soleil. Or cow persons. Cow persons doing stripper pole moves over the audience. I just loved it. It was so cool and it folded in the pandemic. So I miss that one. What's it called? Boxer? Um, I'm so confused. Bonanza. What are you talking about? There was a club there. Oh, in West in Hollywood. In WeHo. Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry. I thought you were just reliving a really bizarre bar moment. No. I apologize. Did you see... Uh, not sponsored. Heart WeHo. Oh no, they do a fun. They're yeah. doing a viewing party for the 200th episode of Drag Race. They're doing a viewing party with Sasha Colby. It's a Friday night. It's early. It starts at seven. I think that might be fun oh, to go yeah, to. Yeah, I would go. I just I. I would. Whenever we go. do go out, which has been like Ask twice, again, I would. We always end up seeing people that we like. I'm not gonna go. We always. But I would. I would say that I'm gonna. Go. Well, Rachel, friend of the pod, Rachel, go. Rachel, I'll go with you. I'm putting it on record now because I will try and get out of it. Yeah. Let's get into this episode. Yeah. Let's start with the drama between Mistress Isabel Brooks and Malaysia Baby Doll, Baby Doll, Baby Doll Fox. Yeah. What, what did you think? What I... Okay, first of all, I kind of liked that there was drama. Like, actual drama. Right. But the reason was unclear. The producers did kind of show their hand because Mistress started the conversation by saying, a little birdie told me that you were upset, Malaysia. And then someone said, you have so many little birdies talking to you because she's always bringing things up out of the blue, which is like a... Oh, I like that. That it's reminds a, me It's of a storyline producer, which is great. Yeah. Which reminds you of what? Game of Thrones. How? Because there's a guy, because, okay, there's all these people trying to get the throne, right? There's That's all, the game. There's, like, the people that are actually could possibly be, and then there's all their little helpers, and one of them, he has all his little birdies, but it's really just the children, because no one pays attention to children, so the children scamper in and out of the castle, and they overhear things, and they come in, and Varys calls them his, them his birdies. worth it. Thank you. Yeah. Actually, I don't know if that's right. I should rewatch the whole series again just to make sure. So basically what happened in Untucked, Malaysia was talking about how upset she was with the way Lux and Mistress handled the handled picking. The, the, yeah. Them laughing and being like, well, we're going to do I think she was it. saying like, I was trying to tell you that you didn't need to bring that energy and you just kept laughing at me and that made it worse. Which And Sasha agreed and Sasha and said that was the thing is it reached past a level to where it wasn't cool anymore and it did feel like, like Bullies do do that. Bullies they do, do, do laugh at you when, Absolutely. when you're frustrated. Yeah. And it didn't feel good watching it. Like, no. I, I remember being like, I don't like this energy. So she was upset about it. And then Mistress just kind of kept saying, I'm sorry you feel that way, which is not an apology. And then Sasha did end up saying, like, obviously you're not hearing what she's trying to say. So let me explain about, like, how you laughing can make it seem like you're belittling us or whatever. And then someone, I forget, you brought this up Someone earlier. said, like, I hate when Sasha makes every moment. Because Becomes Dumbledore, moment. which like, first of Bitch, all. Bitch, hold on. All, first of all. That was your example. Fuck off. Also. Well, I don't know fuck off. I don't know when she became every, anti-trans. Every moment. You should be paying attention to every word out of Sasha, Sasha Colby. Sasha I agree. And you should be thankful that she is even speaking in your presence. I agree. Because she is mother. And I these agree. are teachable moments. And if you don't And think, what she said was very, and she wasn't even coming. And she wasn't even she coming wasn't off. She wasn't even coming off. Like, she no. was trying to bring yes. some uh -huh. emotional maturity yep. to the situation. Yep. Uh-huh. And not that I was coming oh. down hard on either side, but once you cross Sasha, but I, that's weird. I got Mistress's um, kind of blasé attitude to it and kind of uncomfortable giggles while Malaysia continued to kind of be like, don't disrespect me. And like, I understood the whole, like, it really wasn't that big a deal. Can we all calm down? I understood that. But once you've hurt someone's feelings, it's not really about what you think of the situation or the levity of the situation. Yeah. You hurt her feelings. All you got to say is like, I didn't consider that. Yeah, that probably did hurt. Well, I'm so take, sorry about take that. take the Marsha moment when Marsha tried to kind of generally like, let's move on. We've talked about it enough. And Malaysia said, no, don't disrespect me like that. A lot of people on Twitter were claiming that was I Malaysia agreed. coming from Marsha. No. But then Marsha was like, 
you're right. That's okay. That's how things go. Agreed. And I don't think it was wrong of Malaysia to no. do that. And they're cool. Well, it didn't Obviously, involve this Marcia. happened years it didn't ago. It didn't involve Marsha. Well, yeah, that was Marsha trying to like move was, things along. Right. And Malaysia was like, I'm not ready to move it along. Right. I think that's totally fine. And listen, no matter how you think Malaysia's emotions played into any of this, her feelings were fucking hurt. She was trying to make that known. And the one thing that Mistress did, which was like the kind of giggle laughing thing that she was trying to explain to her why that hurt her feelings, she kind of continued to do. So I got I got that. But on the flip side, we are also team mistress in this house. And I did see like the exasperation. Of, the like, exasperation. Come on, was it that big a deal? Well and also like now mistress but I, or now I Malaysia is kind of clamming up and it's like, well now we're talking about it, but you're not talking like I, I whatever. I think she got it overwhelmed. Was, it's, it totally because she with the exception of Sasha, she was kind of on her own. Like no one was sticking up for her. I was happy Sasha stood up for her and ultimately fast forward they get ready and they do kind and of they come to a hammer moment. it out because it wasn't that big a deal it wasn't that big but of a deal at the but at least also people's feelings Malaysia are wanted to be heard yeah. and I don't feel like perhaps mistress was hearing her right all of this to say that drama was so much more interesting than the, the acting rest of challenge the season. oh yeah mm -hmm. so they're doing Daytona wins Again. I think the reason it worked the first time was because- We didn't know. It was a surprise. To us, to the audience. To the audience. And to the girls. No one knew that there was gonna be farting farting. This was weird. And there was no farting. There was one giant fart at the end and then a little bit of farts, but not not Daytona wins farts. This was Daytona. No, it was Daytona Hold stale it in, suck it in. Stale breath. So. I wish the editors had included RuPaul's explanation of what we were watching before we watched it instead of after, because what they ended up doing was editing it like Tim and Tim Eric. Tim and Eric, good, awesome, awesome, good show, job, whatever. yeah. Which I've never gotten into of you. Yeah, I love Tim and Eric. Yeah, I can't do it. I think it's really funny, but it's really off-putting at first. The weird edits are really off-putting. That kind of weird. Unless you knew. And yeah. then it wasn't until after they showed us the skit that Rue's like, and thank you to Tim and Eric. And I was like, oh, oh. It was a Tim and Eric thing. It was thing. a Tim and Eric thing. It kind of contextualizes the, the reason, but also it still didn't even work like that because the girls were playing comedy. Acting challenges just really are tough. And I see someone behind the scenes is working extra hard to try and make it better and it's just I feel like they're pushing what is that pushing a, a boulder up a hill but then it running rains. up that road Kate Bush let's go to the runway though let's go to the runway we can talk about their performances as yeah, we go yeah 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 so um, let's start with Miss RuPaul, RuPaul gorgeous I loved that I little nude illusion in the it. stomach I love a nude illusion just yeah. I'm putting that out there who are you wearing today because this is so cool some girl from France that I found on Etsy Oh, I love it. Thanks. So the runway is all puffers all puff, the time. Puff it up, baby. Go puff. Not sponsored. Go puff. First off is Lucy LaDuca, and I freaking love this. It's so it cute. It had a reference. It had a reference. Stay puffed, but she looked good. We saw her figure. Yeah, loved it. Yeah. Yeah. For her acting, she was the maid, so she was just kind of in everyone's business. Was she the maid? Or was she a mom? She could have been both. Well, she was really into polish, or making sure there's no dust on that urn. But uh, she's great. I think she she's an it. actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next up is Spice, and she was wearing this blue puffer, icy spicy moment. It was fine. It's the same. It was fine. We're it's just the same seeing stuff we're more. seeing. We're seeing more um, of the same. The critique for her runway always being oh. the same with the purse and the weird. I agree. And I think we've seen all we need to see. From Spice, I, I, I kind of agree with you. But yeah. what I did love about it though, because I will say there are some balls tucked up in there somewhere and they are huge. So it must be very difficult to get them back out after drag. Michelle tells her to cut it out. And then when she's safe, she does her whole thing and I walks herself off that. again. I loved it. I hated that. That is such a fuck you to Michelle. And that's funny. That's funny. I mean, don't be mean to Michelle, but be mean to a judge if they're mean to you, right? Yeah. I, I like it. I hated it. I loved because, it. Because, because. It. it was so cunt. Like mean. Like the British cunt. I think it's a little, like if I was in the top two, or if I was in the bottom two. There we go. Okay. If I was in the bottom two and I saw her do that, I would be 
livid because it's almost like flaunting. I'm safe. You're not. No, no, no. I don't think it had anything to do with the bottom two. If you were in the bottom two and that was your first well, thought, it, you need to do some interesting. No, but it's it's like why are you making? You're it about making you? a show, and it's she's supposed it to herself. be a dramatic moment. But Take it was it her seriously. moment. But it was her moment. She was safe. Why is she thinking about the other two people on stage? Well, even if it's not about the other two, make it about yourself and, and show she did. that you take it seriously. I like For that. me, it was like, okay, you don't take any of this seriously because you know you've got your millions Should of you? followers. Should, Should you? No. But Should you take what Michelle says seriously? Should you? No, Ooh, but I'm not saying tipped. about the Michelle thing. Hot I'm take, saying about take. in general, hot take. don't you want to show that you are relieved or grateful to be there after almost being put in the bottom? I liked it. She couldn't take the acting, well, she couldn't take the line reading direction that Rue was giving her. I almost said yeah. acting direction, but really Rue was like, say it like this. But she couldn't do that and I think we're all just kind of, I'm spiced out. And she should have been in the bottom yeah. last week. So I think yeah. saving her, maybe that was supposed to make us feel that way. Maybe the producers were like, the audience is gonna hate this. Safe. Next week is a lip sync off. Oh, I yeah, saw someone out. post on Twitter, she's she out. can't survive There's that. no way. There's no way. Well, I don't know. I don't want to say no way because these last two weeks have been very confusing. So yeah. possibly. Let's talk about Sasha Colby's look. She is a bee. I she is a sexy bee. This. I love those freaking suspenders when you take the jacket off and you can just oh, have it. Hang it. Yeah. I'm obsessed. I loved it. She looked incredible. Do you remember she the look that always looks Avi incredible. did? Oh yeah. It made me, I immediately thought of Avi. Avi she love. I thought she did great in the challenge. Yeah, I thought she did fine. I thought she who was her scene partner? Lux. I thought she and Lux were fine. Were we supposed to have watched Daytona Wins 1 right before? Because they were playing the same characters as in part one, I think. Oh, they were? I think they were. I, I don't have, I'm going to be honest with you, I, think I don't the, have the emotional space no, to well, take that well, on. I, I think that the penultimate thing of the first one is that two of them end up being lesbians and they go off together. Oh. And I think those were the like, lesbians that came back. That's why they said they're back. still together. Yeah. Speaking of her scene partner, Lux, Lux is in this pink. I was thinking Gem of the Holograms, but she said futuristic Jackie O, the pink suit. <laughs> when she was wearing yeah. when her husband got shot. I loved it. Meatball actually does this look, but more true, on, to form. true to form, where it was the actual like pink suit and it's covered in blood and brain matter. It's it's not funny. <laughs> But it is funny. It's really funny. You ever seen that movie, House of Yes? Parker yes, Pose. of course. Parker Posey is a like, goddamn. Did you see? It was like Christopher Guest actresses getting their due. Like Catherine O'Hara had Moira Rose. Jennifer Coolidge had White Lotus. The other, yeah. It is now Parker Posey's turn. Well, I'm going to tell I you something. Wait. I'm going to tell you it's something. Coming. I'm going to tell I you it. something. I think probably you don't care, but your, your husband might. Okay. Lost in Space, the Netflix series. There are okay. three seasons, and Parker Posey plays Dr. Smith. A woman doctor? We really are lost in space. <laughs> <laughs> she is so good. Malaysia Baby Doll Baby... Wait, you came up with this last yeah. week? Yeah. Malaysia Baby Doll. Baby Doll. Baby Doll Fox. Uh, I love it. I loved it. I love a bold pattern. Without her opening the coat up and kind of turning it inside out for us to see the inside, I wouldn't have seen that it was puffer on the outside. I couldn't see that this was a puffer. So yeah. the fact that she had to turn it out, I was kind of like, I wish it had been a little more obvious. And maybe it was for the judges seeing it in person, but on TV, did it read as puffer to you? I had to look, but also like- Made you look. How many, maybe that's part of it. Puffer, she wanted how you many to different ways can you wear puffer stuff? Well, we'll find out. There's a few different ways. And she um, killed the acting challenge. Yeah, I thought she was really good. I did like how Rue was like, can you speak in tongues? And she's like, I'll try. And I was thinking, that's what everyone who speaks in tongues does. They just try. <laughs> <laughs> they just make it, a, sorry if you speak in tongues and you really think you're talking to God. Don't watch us. Yeah. Go to church. R-M-A-R-E obsessed with this. So gorgeous. So beautiful. Did you kind of wish that she had continued the puffer kimono down instead of the pants? Yeah. 
Yeah, me too. But even with that, it did out, kinda, I loved it. She was kind of dressed like she was hosting a web series. You know how we don't wear pants. And Aura, then, well, so she yeah. wanted the lead. She won last week, so she got to pick everything. Yes, yes, yes. So she picked the lead, even she though everyone wanted fantasy, it. She fantasy, which makes me laugh. And then, Mistress Isabel Brooks came along and suggested, well, why don't we try reading the other? To be fair, she suggested it after Aura was missing all of the references. Right. And she's like, I don't get this line. I don't understand this line. And so Mistress is like, okay, you're going to have a lot of those references. Yeah. I know the references. Is, I, listen, was it a little manipulative? Yeah, but also, did it make sense? Yeah. Yeah, Which and I also, that's makes the game. Good it's funny. Yeah. yeah. So, as the widow, as Aura's doing it, she realizes this is not going well for her. And she's like, maybe I should have just stuck with fancy. No, but I'm I don't like, think she I don't think that would have worked no. at all. I think, if anything, it would have made it worse. She's just not an actress. She's that's not. Okay. She's not, and that's okay. Jax is also a cute little bumblebee. I loved it. It's so cute. I thought it was interesting, and I loved the shape of it. I liked it. I think they were like bandana patterns. I think yeah. that's what the different patterns were. I thought that was so cool. Again, it's the netting bodysuit. I it's did I did wish there was something that she's wearing. a little bit it more. It reminded me of the orange. And I think we've also already seen something where she wore something very similar, of just like netting underneath. It's these full body kind of afterthoughts that I, I think are cheapening all of her looks. But her acting... I didn't mind it. I didn't register it. She saw Stoner, so she immediately thought, I need to play this down low, low energy. But then she didn't. Stoner humor to me is just laughing at everything you say. Well, it, yeah, it's you. But I'm not a stoner. But if I get high, you get high for, <laughs> for no reason. I it's do. It's so weird. I do. It's because you match energy. Patty Hearst, that would be you. What is she? Mistress Isabel Brooks in these bell bottom chaps that I am up. living for. Obsessed. Now, I loved this because, like, I loved Lucy's look because I love a reference. But if we break down her look, she was wearing a white puffer jacket over a regular bodysuit. So I did feel like it was kind of expected in that, oh, you did puffer as a coat. So did everyone else. Cool. I just yawned. I'm so sorry. It's because I was talking about coats and you get so... I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm, just I'm sick of coats. Yeah, while well, you sleep under them when you, you forget your keys. So I like that Mistress was like, I'm not going to just put on a jacket. I'm going to puffify everything. And the funniest thing for me that they didn't say, because it is kind of rude, but it did look like she was wearing a diaper and I loved it. She puffed out her panties and it looked like a diaper and that's funny. And her name was all over everything. It looked yeah. so good. Yeah, I she looked, it looked amazing. Outrageously beautiful. I mean, her makeup is always on point, but there's something about this look as a whole. It just really worked for me. Yeah. Stunning. Yeah. Stunning. Stunning. Oh, and her in the as challenge, fancy. she was good. It wasn't funny, no. but that wasn't her fault. I love when that snake starts to eat the tail of it itself. Right? Is that the, the I don't snake? Like, and then I don't it like eats. snakes. So I like that they were referencing themselves the whole time. I like that, you know, Mistress was like, oh, that's a vivacious, that's a whatever. But then when I watched the final product, all of that was kind of missing for me, for Mistress. I thought she was fine, but then I didn't get a real. I don't know. Yeah. I thought she's fine. I thought she's fine. Yeah, I thought she did a good job. Yeah. Anitra, always looking stunning on the runway. I loved, I loved this. it. I didn't understand it. I like, she I was like, care. I am dressed as the official bird of Las Vegas, and that bird is a whore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sex worker, but we'll take it. In the challenge, in the acting challenge, she was... She made brownies, I think, right? No, Marsha did. Oh, she yeah. She talked to Marsha about brownies. She talked the brownies. to Marsha. I, I thought, thought she, she was good. Great. Our voices went up so. Listen. I, I thought, thought she, she was, was great. Good. Yeah, I thought she was good. <laughs> I, I like her. I did her. too. I thought she was natural. I thought she was funny. Yeah. The part of the challenge that the only part that really made me LOL, like I actually went ha ha on the couch. That's my morning laugh. Was when she said, "Get those nuts out of my face," and the only laugh you could hear was Latrice's laugh. Now that's a Tim and Eric. I mean, that's that was really well done. Was she says a Latrice line, and you hear Latrice laughing. That's hilarious. That's funny. I was kind of hoping Latrice would be the surprise guest, though. Oh, I loved the surprise guest. But wait, we'll get we'll get to yeah, her in yeah. a minute. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Now she's always trying to do a little something uh, twist on an on idea. Her nose. 
and she's wearing white puffer stuff and then she's got frostbite. She's frostbitten. She also did the diaper look, which I love. In the acting challenge, she oh, made the brownies. Was good. I thought she was great. I thought she was very good. Yeah, I liked her a lot. Yeah, I liked her out. She's an actress. She, and you could tell. Been on Broadway. Selena Stitties. She's wearing a puffer coat. I, I don't, there's something you don't like about her. No, 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 don't say that. I like her. Her fashion, her style. I love her talking heads. I dig her personality. I think she'd be super fun to see live. But yeah, there's just a bit of a, there's a mess to everything she does. And I don't know if it's, big, not a mess, that's the wrong word. I don't know. It's lacking a polish that I think we'll see after the show. I don't think here's we will, because I think she feels great about what she's doing. Well, here's the thing. As she should. I just wish that there was a, don't a, listen to us. a puffer boot to go with this. Like a fun puffer moon boot. I like the comedic idea of it. It's just like, the stuffing it with cotton balls was odd. I get the point. You're like, look, it's see-through puffer jacket, but like, I don't know. It's all clear pockets, but puffer jackets don't usually have that many pockets. Maybe if they were water filled or something, that would be cool. Ooh, water If bed. everything was floating in it. But her, her acting challenge, she was fine. Yeah, I thought she did a good job. She looked beautiful in the acting challenge. So that's the girls, but there is one cast member we haven't yet talked about in Daytona Wins 2, so and they, that is... They get a surprise guest that they don't even know is coming. The door opens as they're filming it, and it's Danny, Danny Trejo. Trejo. Oh, we love Danny Live for this. Trejo. And because... He's in my Regal opening video skit. They, oh, yeah. They yeah. do. That's really long. It's a long skit. I wish It's they a long skit. It. I usually go to the bathroom, but by the time I get back, it's Danny Trejo's And they part. filmed it at our Regal. I think they did. Not yeah. to dox us. Oh, they did. Don't come us at our, don't he, come us at our Regal. <laughs> because if Latrice came in, it would be cute, but... But Danny expected. Trejo. Danny Trejo. Makes no sense. Makes no sense. It is so funny. They didn't even let him judge. And then at the very end, he didn't need to, okay? He had to get back to his restaurants, which by the way, we have, we have to, to go. go. They showed like bloopers or clips after. That was the best And part. it was just him saying drag race things that, that he was probably didn't understand. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. said Miss Vanjie. I kind of giggled and walked off. That's yeah. funny. Before we get to the winner, can we just pay homage, give due to our guest judge? Harvey. Harvey Gian. I love Harvey. They look so good. They are so cute to yeah. me. What we do in the shadows. I'm just putting that on your plate again. Oh, maybe again. I should watch you that. You keep forgetting. I'm putting it on your plate. Well, now I have to watch Game of Thrones first, and then I can maybe do what we do in the shadows. Good, next. okay. So Harvey, she still won't know what you do. There's but... a lot of shadow play in Game of Thrones. There's a lot of what? You see what they do in the shadows in Game of Thrones. There's a whole shadow monster God. that this woman, the red lady, birds, and then he comes out and he kills one of the people. Four hours. Huh? So we got a winner. The winner is Mistress. Mistress Isabel Perez. Congratulations, Mistress. I'm so proud she of her. She rang that winner of bell bottom. I love that when they announced it, she went, finally. <laughs> which, which is the mistress we expect to see. And we yeah, know. we love it. We love I a diva. Love her. I love we love her. a diva. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, our bottom two are Jax and, and Aura Mayari. Oh yeah. Based on their performances, I agree. Yeah. They keep putting Jax down there and that feels bad. And I, I think maybe it was deserved this round, but I don't know if it's always been deserved. I do feel like there are certain points in Drag Race seasons, United States Drag Race, because that's when they have a thousand people in the cast. There does get to be a point kind of towards the beginning, middle of the season where there are three or four girls that you know they're not going to send much further. That it is kind of like it, With the amount of their misery. It feels like a slog. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, great. Like, Spice should be gone. You saved her another week. Cool. She'll be gone soon, next week. Aura won that challenge last week, and it was like a clear sign that, hey, she's going home next week. You know, like, it came out of yeah. nowhere. Jax clearly is going home soon as well. It's just like, as a viewer, it's annoying. Just yeah. send them all home. Happy for them. Happy for their success. But like we can tell the writing is on the wall. Yeah. And I don't want to have to burn down this house again. The writing is on the wall and... So they do a lip sync and... Okay, can I say this? They're not showing Aura at all. Okay, but can I say this? Aura's black pink lip sync. <gasps> Rhymes. Black pink lip sync. Aura's black pink lip sync from the first episode. We were like... 
because she didn't do that much. Turns out she had an injury. She hurt herself before coming on the show. Oh no. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, she tweeted about it. Like, I get it. This was a last minute change because I really fucked up my body somehow. And like, I had to do this kind of last minute, blah, blah, blah. So as she was lip syncing, I had that in my mind. She can't really oh, do a whole that. lot. So knowing that, I think it made sense that she wasn't flipping around, even though we know she can. Jax? Jax was... Killed it. Killing it. Killed it. That's the thing is, you, you... You, you. You keep putting Jax in the bottom. You obviously aren't liking what she's doing, but she's not losing a lip sync. But we also know that there are ways that they make that happen. For instance, the detox versus jinx lip sync. We've heard detox say that last minute they changed, changed it. So she didn't know it as well. Yeah. Well, and it was clearly a jinx song. So they did that to keep jinx around. So they can get rid of Jax if they want to, just for whatever reason they're keeping her around, which whatever, I don't know. I just, it's disappointing because because we've seen all we are going to see from them. At least it feels that way to me. And there are other people perhaps that I would have liked to see more from. For instance, Robin Fierce, who had she stayed one more week, we would have seen her in a J for Pay puffer original. Have you seen oh, it? Oh shit, Did you no. see it? Bitch, I'm gonna put it on screen for everybody, but let me show you, it is unreal. <gasps> oh, that's so cool. Look at that, she puffed a hoop skirt. That's so cool. She puffed a hoop skirt. So we say goodbye to Aura. We say goodbye to Aura. She has a weird exit line. Her exit line? I wrote it down because I was so weirded out by it. My dead dad will haunt you all. Or haunt you all. It sounded like haunt, but I think it was supposed to be haunt. Was that a plot point that I missed? Did she talk about the death of her father? No, but that was Danny Trejo's. That was her thing. Danny Trejo's dad died? I don't know, but it's the number one exit line for me. <laughs> I have to That's say, something I can get on board with. I don't care how her run was on the show, according to editors, not not in real life. She's she's no terrible. no no, she's amazing. But but that was. That exit line will go down in history because we're all like, what? Well, if you enjoyed this episode, why? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and of course that notification bell so you never miss another one. And then go over to patreon.com slash IMHO the show and check out what we got there. We got tons of stuff. We got it's, this, we got that. Also, we are both on Cameo. So if you want us to send a message to a loved one, a hated one, or to yourself, which could also be loved or hated by you. Go ahead and find us on Cameo. Or get a Shameo. That's one from both of us together with it's the whole, so that's a mini episode. So yeah, actually we just filmed for about an hour and a half and now we're going to film more and we're just doing Shameos. Oh God. No, you're excited. I am, I am excited. I'm sorry. Bye. Okay, we'll see you on the next, we'll see you on the next wins when they blow through, when people fart. This was my idea to film tonight after I worked and I shouldn't have, you shouldn't have, I shouldn't have suggested this. Well, we've done I'm it so before. Sorry. No, I know, but I'm so tired and so I'm not giving what needs it's to too be late. gotten. You're here already. You ever listen to that podcast your husband told me about, about the other people on the bus in Speed? And there's a podcast called I Was There Too. And they interview like extras and day players on like oh, cool things. Oh, doesn't, what's her name? Ralph, Jean, uh, Ralph, Ralph, the girl, she's so pretty. Grace and Frankie, does she not host that? June Day and Ralph, no, I don't think she oh. hosts that. So we talked about the episodes being cut down, or no being made even longer because everyone was upset that the episodes were so short. But did you see how they were making their upsetting feelings known on Twitter? You mean on the Real Friends of WeHo yeah. posts? Yeah. So anytime Real Friends of WeHo would post anything, they would just get inundated in the comments. Inundated. Poop. Scat. Scat play. Fecal. So Santorum. much poo poo porn. I and never remember, saw pee -pee -poo -poo it. Pee pee poo poo up here with humor. When it comes to porn, it's still up here because it's hilarious. Yeah. Poo poo porn's funny. And I, I, if you get turned on by, if you come, have fun. Just know I'm going to be giggling a little. Not at you, but at the poo poo. Because yeah. poo poo is what? Funny. Brown. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> If you do it right, if you do it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. It can absolutely. be other shades. So just remember, scat can change the world. I did it, I do, do. Poo poo. <laughs> Let's film our Valentine's Shamios, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to put you in a lift, and they're going to carry you, you home. Thank 
and then I'm gonna stay. What happened to me today? The opposite of speed. I tried to order an Uber after work and it said all the nearby Ubers are busy. Check in later. Can I be honest with I you? I hate that. That never happened to me in Chicago, but it happens to me a lot here in LA. Well, everything's more spread out, so like... Yeah, but there's more cars here. No, but they're all spread out and they can't get to you as fast. Because in Chicago, everything was like... Doo -doo 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 -doo, and here, everything's like... You know what I mean? I was having a tough day the other day, and by that I mean I was bored. Well, because Curtis was using the computer, so I couldn't work because he was so busy. Yeah. So I got my little ass in the car, and I went up to the Bel Air Starbucks. Oh, Otherwise known as, I, yeah, I call it Celebrity people. Starbucks. Because I just wanted, it was a nice day out. I just wanted to be around famous people while I drank my coffee. Now, did amongst. I, amongst, of course. Did I yeah. see any recognizable celebrities? No, I did not. However, did I see a bunch of really old people dressed in really weird ways? I did. So I know they had money. And that was nice. Also, my Subaru was in the middle of a parking lot filled with Teslas and Mercedes. So that was kind of fun, you know, because I yeah. looked like the help, which is fine. I'll help you. And I was, the whole time I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, they can't tell. <laughs> like, I'm dressed as weird as they are. So if you're ever near a rich neighborhood and they have a Starbucks, go to that. It's fun. They keep everything really clean because rich people are mean. And it's a good time. We haven't ever been, uh, have I ever taken you to it? Mm. Oh, bitch. I love, listen, I love being surrounded by rich. I, it, one day it'll rub off. And by that, I mean, maybe they'll hit me with their car. Oh God, speed. Speed three is all a, about me just trying to get on a, bo a bus that has a bomb on it. Like already, like I won't go through the, but it's just me like going on all these buses being like, eh? You got a bomb? Hey, before I get on your bus, you got your knife out, holding the door open. Before I get on here, you got a bomb? Nope. All right, I'll wait for the next one. And then you go. And then I click the knife and it's a it's a comb. And I go. You gotta make the sound, otherwise they won't know. Oh, <laughs> just lost a nail. <laughs> Listen, sometimes you gotta lose a nail for comedy. You gotta okay. lose a nail to find yourself. Okay, I'm gonna go wipe now. 